there via inherited widget. And then we're going to call set stay on. Oh, what's up, Flutter devs? I was just over here going over some of my notes for the upcoming BitRise event. Uh, we're going to be doing a panel of Flutter developers, including, of course, yours truly, along with Remy, the creator of the provider package, Simon, co-founder of the Flutter community, and Mariano, who is single-handedly responsible for the Flutter Clone Wars. That event's going to be going on December 3rd, starting at 9 a.m. Pacific time, and it's free to the public if you sign up online, so I hope to see you there. But actually, while I have you here, why don't I go ahead and share a few tips for those of you getting started with your Flutter journey. Tip number one, start with what you know. A lot of developers, they get started with Flutter or they start a new app, and the first question they ask is, what should I do about state management? What should my architecture be? What's the perfect solution to the organization of the project? These things don't matter. Start with what you know. If you're given a UI specification from a designer, then the only information that you have is what the user interface should look like. So where should you start? The user interface. If you start a project and the only thing you know for sure is that you have to support this backend service, maybe an HTTP networking system, start there. Go build the networking client. Start with what you know and discover the rest. That's the nature of the job. Don't try to be perfect out of the gate. But also remember that as you learn new things, be sure to refactor. Always be refactoring. Which brings us to the next tip. Tip number two, take testing seriously. Testing isn't some nice to have. Testing isn't what you do when your real work is done. And you shouldn't look at testing like some kind of chore that your manager forces you to deal with. In fact, test code might be even more important than your source code. You see, source code solves your problem today, but tests make sure that your code keeps working forever into the future. In a lot of ways, from a business perspective, that's even more important than solving the problem today. In the world of testing, you have unit tests, component tests, UI tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end tests. You want to use the correct combination, or I should say the effective combination, of each kind of test to ensure that your app does what it's supposed to and doesn't do what it's not supposed to. This reduces the burden on human testers. It also reduces the possibility for human error. And if you follow the advice in tip number one, as you refactor, you absolutely need tests to ensure that you don't break things that were previously working. And tip number three, don't use packages, libraries, and plugins to accomplish things that you are not capable of accomplishing without them. The difference here is whether a package library or plugin will be an accelerant for you or a crutch. An accelerant is great, a crutch not so much. Eventually these solutions don't have the feature you need or they have a bug that prevents you from shipping your feature. In either event, you need to be equipped to do things without the plugin, the library, or the package. So on good days, it makes you faster, but you need to make sure that on bad days, it doesn't block your entire production schedule. Use packages, plugins, and libraries to move faster when you're still capable of getting there on your own. But if you truly don't know how those things work, if they're like a black box of magic, think twice before including that in your project. So those are my three tips for all of you Flutter developers getting started out there in the world of Flutter. I hope to see you December 3rd, 9 a.m. Pacific time, where again, you'll be hanging out with me, Remy, Simon, and Mariano. And thanks to the folks over at BitRise for hosting us.